I think he only used it for background images. Uh, so we tweak it uh, so that it can identify the different elements. Uh, for example, if it's a, a, a product image, it usually comes at the center. And uh, so if necessary... So, so you did it in rule-based sense. So that means you tell it exactly what's based yeah. on if it's a product image, do this, and if it's a thing, do this. Is that, is that the case? Is that a rule-based? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the, the okay. composition, it, 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 it performs good. I mean, even though it's a uh, rule-based. I, mean, I think, I think it's, yeah, no, the, the, the problem is that you cannot say that. Like, okay. you, you only composed one and very simple. Yeah. And it can't get it wrong sometimes in one. So you have to be systematic. I mean, in a way, for example, if you are going to be presenting, if I am a client and you just do that, I can tell you, you didn't yeah. do much. In a way yeah. that there's nothing, uh, there's nothing that different. Now, you, if it was doing something, you have told from another data or, you know, uh, the challenge, you, either you have to present the challenge and then you have to understand, measure, and in a way like, stitching pictures is not an interesting one right so how can it uh, is that for example you could argue that it didn't bring uh, the name uh, in the middle it didn't cover faces and was that your work or was that the work of you know the package so it's an important yeah. it's important to really highlight what actually is innovative or what actually is okay. what you have done more mm -hmm. than just run another code right so I would say focus the storytelling in this part would be what have you done? I mean, I don't seem to see uh, anything you know exciting other than just using a package. So was there any learning? I mean, maybe that you you did, but you are not telling it. Um, uh, I think we explored the the, the mix code and we uh, do. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, yeah, so you, you see this one is kind of stitching the, even though it's kind of stitching the, the, the image, if you give this to the harmonizer uh, with the, the model, that's the libcom, uh, this will harmonize the, the, the image, right? You see, there is this line, right? So, mm -hmm. You, if you give this image to the harmonizer, it will it will harmonize it. Well, that's another uh, input that we bring to this project. Yeah. Okay. And and where is the harmonizer? How did did it perform well? Uh, it, yes, I think uh, it's on the instance, so I can't experiment it now. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, for for example, that that's not an excuse. Right, it's like I think these things are. You know, we are at week eleven. You must yeah. be prepared. You know that this is Monday, and you will present it. And you had all the time for the instance. You could have pulled and prepared it. So in a way, I think some things you have to be. I'm going to be very harsh from the next two weeks. You have to know it's nothing personal, but yeah, it is the expectations, right? Got it. So yeah. um, it's it, you have to be already like whatever you have, you have to give it. So. It's good what you have done. I mean, I've seen your blocks and it's good. I don't have that, but you have to demonstrate that there's something like the generation, for example, the test is good, but what happens, you know, what happens, like what is actually the innovation? Where is the challenge? You have to either tell it in the presentation or show it in the code or somewhere. Otherwise people would feel like, okay, you know, you just are excited because you run a package. That must not be the story. So, but uh, I think you have you have done something. You should also look up to how to tell it, and if you are presenting it again. Okay. Yeah. okay. Good. Anyone yeah. then from your team want to add anything? Basile, is it a question or a, pre a presentation for the next one? If it's a question, you can go on. It's a presentation. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Abdulhamid Yaya, anyone from your team or are you done?
I think I think we are done. Yeah. Oh, great. I, I as I said, really take it more of as a constructive feedback. Um, I think you have done great. Like I, I like your work. It's nothing, but I want you to impress, to tell the story in a very good way when you are especially connecting with um, people who doesn't know, you know, who you are, because you have you have only. A, I, they only know you with that presentation, so it has to be uh, clean. Okay, then Basile. Uh, okay, my partner Mubarak will start, and then I'll continue. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me share my screen. Is visible, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I will start uh, with the report I had. Uh, so uh, let me start with the business needs. The business need is in uh, short term. Uh, it is uh, converting textual uh, advertisement concepts into storyboards. In short, uh, it is the aim of the project. So the when we and plan to convert text into a storyboard the first thing that comes is uh, generating uh, an image based on uh, what we have on our concept so uh, we have uh, tried different image generation models that uh, can help us uh, to get uh, a good storyboard the first uh, we tried is uh, automatic 1111 it is a stable, a stable diffusion uh, based model uh, I run it locally and uh, uh, as recommended by uh, Milky, uh, I can able to give the equation. No, go on, go on. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, uh, by uh, increasing the steps, uh, we got somehow quality image due to uh, my PC. Uh, limitation I can't uh, able to give uh, above uh, 40 but that uh, he this image was generated by using 35 uh, uh, steps but even though I can give uh, 40 the results was not that much good so what I used for uh, comparing and uh, for comparing uh, different models this was the prompt I give all of the models a suspenseful image of a, Lo a Lego city set with buildings, vehicles, and minifigures uh, coming to life in a, a dynamic 3D environment. Uh, so uh, after showing this result, uh, I used uh, Focus. It was also, uh, also stable diffusion based uh, uh, model. Uh, and it comes after uh, automatic 11.11. And uh, what makes it better? Uh, compared to the automatic 11.11, I shared this uh, here a link. You can check uh, what it makes uh, better for more understanding. And also it in integrates, I guess, GPT-2 uh, to refine the prompts wh what we give. And the result was uh, this somehow. Uh, uh, and we can say it uh, it is good. So uh, the other model I tried is uh, Copilot Designer from Microsoft. I think uh, it is, uses uh, DAL3, I guess, uh, because it is uh, also using GPT uh, models, as we know, Bing. So uh, the image was, uh, as you can see it here, it was really good. And the other one I tried is uh, Civit AI. Uh, the good thing about uh, Civit AI is it is an open source uh, community-based uh, online hub uh, and also we can get uh, many images uh, as we can see it here for example uh, this image was generated by using this prompt uh, and also the negative prompts they will provide everything uh, that uh, helps to generate this image so we can learn from uh, them by showing and how we can uh, correct and modify our prompts uh, after showing this uh, i also and this one was generated by using uh, some model. And also, uh, we can uh, try different models uh, on CVT AI. We can change also checkpoints uh, uh, to 
get an image. And the other one I tried uh, was uh, Firefly from Adobe. Uh, it is also free. Uh, and the image generated was uh, this one. So after experimenting all of this, uh, we choose focus uh, because uh, it is it has a documentation that, uh, that clearly mentions how we can integrate it through API and the uh, image quality was good. So after uh, choosing focus, uh, we have able to generate some of uh, some images. Uh, for example, uh, where is it? yeah, uh, the thing uh, I showed you uh, earlier, but uh, we plan we plan to use uh, OpenAI GPT uh, three point five Turbo to refine the concepts uh, instead of giving uh, the concepts or the background de descriptive as it is. Uh, what with what if we refine it using uh, GPT and uh, enhance the prompt? So uh, by utilizing GPT 3.5, uh, we can able to uh, generate uh, this image, this for the background uh, and this one for the uh, call to action button. Uh, we can able to do uh, this. And if we, uh, this one was generated through the uh, API call, uh, as you can see, uh, it will be good if uh, we show it. So it is a mix a bit uh, for a Coca-Cola now so uh, it can give us a better quality as compared to uh, giving the concept as it is uh, it is better to use uh, gpt 3.5 uh, and also uh, this one was for uh, uh, the bubble uh, prompt that uh, for the, the example prompt that we have uh, used uh, and it it also aligns with the prompt the focus one and so uh, and this this image was uh, generated by integrating the call to action uh, button in the background. Uh, as you can see uh, from here, I used the prompt that generated by uh, the Open AI uh, API and give it to focus uh, using the interface, the interface, and uh, the image was uh, somehow realistic and uh, good for uh, advertisement. And also, after uh, generating uh, images, we have to resize them because uh, we have uh, two sizes, uh, mid-page unit and full size. So we have to resize it uh, or uh, generate uh, using uh, the size that we have. But we can't do that uh, using focus. Uh, and also, Milky was uh, recommend us to use uh, automatic 11.11. And uh, I use automatic 11.11. Uh, to generate using that size, but the image quality and uh, also uh, the generated one is not that impressive. So it is better to resize the uh, image generated by using uh, focus instead of uh, using automatic 11. 11. So I used uh, a pillow library to resize the image. Uh, and also after uh, generating and putting a storyboard, this was the background in this one was the call to action button. Uh, for this case, uh, as you can see, the text was not that uh, what I want to get, but uh, this is what we can achieve for the image generation part. And after this one, uh, Basilel will continue and present if you have a question. Uh, so, okay, just m m maybe, I mean, it's not a question. Maybe you can answer it at the end. You don't have to answer it now because I think just for type. What were you expecting in a way? Like, is it just by, so partly you can, yeah, and how reliable are things like, is there a strategy? You know, is it just working for one or is it working for others? You know, maybe just that one at the end you can discuss. But go on, Basile. Uh, all right. So uh, I think yeah, well, I'm supposed to present it as if I'm presenting it to a client. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. So uh, one moment. Let me share my screen. Can you you can see my screen, right? Yes, we do. 
All right, so this is an advertisement that uh, that is made by the Alludio company. And what we wanted to do uh, in this is just to, is not to actually do uh, the entire uh, advertisement, but we wanted to uh, present that we can, we can uh, compose this image given relevant parts, we can generate, uh, like as my partner Mubarak was saying, we can present it uh, in different ways. And and then we can do the composition utilizing uh, deep learning techniques, which would automate the whole process. So this is the final image, which uh, Aludio did. And so this is the car alone. This is the, uh, let's see, this is a background image. And then this is the call to action. Uh, this is the, it's, it's a text and then they have a logo. So the first thing we did is we chose uh, scikit-learn as our regression model that we wanted to use and then using, so before that, we we utilized YOLO. Let me just, uh, yeah, let me just show, I, I, I don't wanna go a lot about YOLO, but YOLO is, a, a, YOLO is what we use to label our data. So uh, as you can see here, it, it can identify in between text, in between logos, and others and also we yeah uh, uh, call to action buttons and all that it can identify so using that uh, we can train it on our whole data set and get the location of it and once we get the location of it uh, this is what will look like so uh, for logo or for text elements the, like uh, it will give you uh, the x coordinates and then the y coordinates as, along with the image id so what we did was First of all, we calculated the size, uh, and for the sake of time, I'm gonna rush a bit, but we encoded the labels. So uh, since machine learnings exactly cannot take text, we encoded uh, our labels and yeah, we, so we used different parameters uh, like number of elements, for example. So uh, here, for example, uh, here you can see in this image, it has detected one, two things and we hoped that uh no uh, actually it's we experimented to see if uh the number of elements with that are detected within the picture along with the size of what we did and along with what it was and other factors can we see if it can predict so we used uh, mlp regressor uh, to like it learn a uh, multi-layered uh regressor model and we fitted it and then yeah we saw how it's predicted. So the mean squared error uh, was not high. In fact, it was very good. However, uh, the R square was at 0 0.46, which is which is not good. But uh, due to the lack of time, we, we are just not able to, uh, and all we were aiming at was the proof of concept. So yeah, uh, we left it at here and saw this. So. Now for the presentation to just see it working out. So the first thing we did was we took uh, the, the background image and then we put it into one image. Uh, and then once we put it into one image, first uh, we generated the logo uh, using just uh, random sizes that, was, uh, that we did. And then using CV2, we were able to, uh, so this uh, predicts like where we should put it and then using cv2 we we took the background picture and then this is where uh it predicted that uh we put it which is which is a lot closer to where we want it to be next we headed on and we said uh yeah we have so this is the encoding and this is our side and then this is the number of elements that are there uh, so just just consider just on this one yeah was this data part of your training uh, which data? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did it. So I did some. Means, yeah. So that means like you're just fitting back where it should be. So you're not. It's not like on a validation data set, or it's not. It's just the same. This data has been in the training uh, when you train uh, oh, the multiple level. No, no. So here's uh, the we we took this from the assets page, but for the data page, we for what we actually trained. It was just this one, so this was not in there. But here's the thing about the data. Uh, it has a lot of uh, the Lexus, uh, um, what is it called? It has a lot of the, the Lexus um, ads. So uh, we did have similar advertisements, but this is, uh, we're, ran we're randomly generating from the number of images and, yeah, but uh, we, so we, this, we this don't- contamination, but 
there is contamination, but it's not exactly this was not in the training set. This exactly was not in the training set. Yes. Okay. Uh, just, just th that's called. Let's call that one contamination. Um, okay. Let's proceed. All right. Yeah. So next, uh, we did a text, and then once we generate text, we so where we place it, it placed it here, uh, which is again close to where we wanted to. And finally, uh, we went for uh, our call to action button and it placed it there. As you can see, it didn't place it exactly like in a in a production grade mode, but uh, at least what we were hoping from this project from pre from this presentation is that given more data, given more uh, relationships in between, uh, we could utilize deep learning to uh, to automatically and precisely uh, place it uh, where we want it to be. So, so this is the, the final image and this is what we have. So it's not exactly as good, but uh, we hope that it was close enough. Uh, yeah, so if anybody has any- so Even if it's proof of concept, why are people just only doing on one? Nobody would trust one. So I am a bit somehow like uh, you can spin if you want, you can spin. I think your instances are there. You can spin and get more. Like nobody would read. I would never trust anyone that shows me one. So just, mm -hmm. just for the sake of it, ever, never, just don't do one. Okay. You know, Absolutely. it means nothing. Like unless you have only one data, it means you know. I don't know if you selected that one because it's high performing. I don't know. I can't compare if you're just doing it as one. Right. So. In a way, this is for everyone. Just don't do on one. I mean, it's why, like, unless it's so expensive to do it on many, just do many, and then maybe you can show one, or maybe you can show what is performing best and what's not performing, you know. But it just seems like, you know, uh, not trustworthy when you, when you show one. So I would say now as well, just, be, you know, infer for, you know, I, I think you are doing it on locally, so you can do it. So just get more and like sort them into best performing and, and then also quantify the contamination it's a good work but you know even a, in a prototype it's not about just uh simply just doing and then not not understanding it's there's you have now gone far so you have to really get the most important piece which is you know are you doing it on the training sample and how bad is the contamination that means is there what is the closest looking uh image there in the in the training if it's identical you cannot call it uh you know you cannot call it contamination it's identical so it's and then show show like variations you know again in validation and test so something that cannot be for example a brand that has not been at all broadcasted so that, that can be in the test so just convince that there is value in it like it's i think you have you you both in the generation steps and then in the analysis step you have done something but it, it lacks that very key important part that people want to understand okay uh we'll, okay. we'll work on yeah. that thank you okay great do you want to was that the question was um at mubarak do you want to answer that one just before we go to brahan uh, which question to be specific? I think I, I forgot, but I asked one question before I forgot. Uh, uh, I, mean, I remember is uh, why you used one instead of having a lot uh, to show. Okay. So it's the same. So again, hopefully that you will show us. Um, if you are, when you are presenting to the Ludio, you probably would show us a bit more. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah. Good branch. Should we prepare for another presentation or? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I think it's most of you just prepare. Like, uh, I mean, like we would send you who's gonna be presenting, but exactly, I think you would present just like now for them, not for us. Yeah, yeah, but so we should prepare what you just told us, right? Exactly. So I mean, it's not a comment only just to take without implementation, but implement. Even okay. if, I think it should take very little. If you are wrote, wrote your code in a certain way, I think it should just be running. But at yeah. least I'm mean, we'll let you know. But yeah, please prepare. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Brahan. Okay. Um. Hello, everyone. Hi. Mm, okay. So, um, is it visible now? 
yeah it's coming yeah um okay um so what we have tried to do is like to accomplish this task it it says automatic storyboard synthesis for digital advertisement and the whole idea of the project is to make it um to make the uh, the storyboard creation and the, the starting from the asset creation to the the frame uh, composition and the storyboard generation to make it automatic and in a better and dynamic format um so what we have done this is what the um, business objective is and we know that and how ai is um affecting uh, advertisement technology and personalized targeting and ad creation and in campaigns optimization so uh, afterwards we're gonna go deep down into image generation so there, there are um, a bit of different ways to create various images and there are uh, mainly two ways using ge generative adversarial networks and di um, diffusion models so what we have uh, tried to do is first to try to set a data set and explore a little bit about it. Not much of helpful, but um, yeah, it's just to depict what we have done. Um, first, it shows um, it, it contains the image AR and CTR, and we try to see their com distribution and correlational matrix of these two things in the data set, which is, I think, 900, about 900 um, rows. And afterwards, uh, from the concepts data set, we try to extract uh, the most common asset categories. So, uh, background is like it, it exists in every. Um, um, advertisement being created and interactive elements and logos and things like that. And then we moved afterwards into model training um, using Yolo. So um, afterwards from here, I will post, I will let Ikram take over and express what we have done. And then I'll get back to you. Ikram, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so, okay your sound is a bit echoing. Uh, I think you may you may need to mute uh, Brahan. It might be go. So Ekram, you can go. So like I will discuss. Uh, I will just I will explain how we approach the image generation part. Ikram, you're are not you audible. Are you screen sharing, Ikram? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah can you can see it? it? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. okay. So, like, this is the part where we trained the YOLO. Uh, first, like, uh, as Basla is, for, uh, he has already explained the why we are using YOLO, but I just wanted to specify that the concept of the concept of YOLO comes in our in our project because like we wanted to detect the object like whether we have uh, a logo or a background uh, in the in the image and then like uh, where they are placed and then we went to get the, uh, the like the height and width of them so like this is the training code for our base model was YOLO v V8 that we wanted to train. Increasing the epoch in our data set, we can get a lot. Uh, the, data set, the data set we used is this one. Uh, like this is the annotation and then this is the image. Like it's around 119. Uh, so like this part shows that the successful training of the YOLO. So like we have tried to we have tried to like uh, this is like the print part where the successful print of these files shows that the successful training of our YOLO. So like this is just the summary part of the the model, and then this is like the this is like but zero file. Uh, actually, I printed I printed it here because like uh, to show us some of the samples of that we. The data that we take to train the model, this uh, the numbers that you are seeing in the in the image shows that the objects that are that we annotated it, and then this is just sample. Uh, 
Um, you run to double Ikram if you're talking. Oops. Uh, yes, you, are, no, you can proceed. Okay. So, like, uh, so this shows. Uh, this is sample of the outcomes of the trained yellow, where it detect, uh, it predicts the detected models, uh, the detected objects in the image. So, like this is the part that we trained yellow, and also I wanted to specify that we have also tried to find to an stable diffusion uh, in the image generation part. So, like this is the code. Uh, actually, like uh, it's just. Uh, one of the approach that we approached, uh, one of the methods that we approached the image generation part, since we were not getting that much of an outcome from the like from the specified models like this. Uh, this is automatic one one. So this screenshot shows that. So like uh, we were thinking that if we find a uh, stable diffusion model, we would have got uh, an outcome. But like we just uh, passed this part. This is actually like. We take around 15 Sharukans model in order. Hopefully that you will come back. We can't hear you now. To uh, find the steep diffusion model, but it doesn't seem that I'm okay. Sorry. Uh, am I audible now? No, you, you go and we come back and you, you know, it's okay, just go on. Okay, so, so like uh, I was just explaining the, the fine tuning part, uh, the methods that we used to fine tune the stable diffusion in which we approached the image generation part. I have showed the screenshot, I think we, you have seen that part. Am I right? Like, have you yeah. seen that I mean, part? The one, the one below, right? Or what? No, like, uh, actually, like, first we try to show, we try to figure out like uh, different models that, uh, for example, this is automatic one one. Uh, it generated this image with uh, like with Anna with the prompt saying that generate for us a creative. Uh, hair product, but like it seems the output is so bad. So like we approached we try to find and the stable diffusion uh, come like from that out after watching that the outcome of automatic one one like we thought that if we have if we if we, if we can prepare a good data so like uh, after fine tuning the stable diffusion model we would have got a, a different and like more quality output so like uh, this is just a uh, uh, an outcome from like uh, around 10 Sharukhan's model after after finding the stable diffusion model but like it seems it, it doesn't seem good but uh, I have also tried it with my photo uh, it seems a good approach but like since we didn't have I have tried uh, like we have tried to to find a lot of data but since we couldn't prepare the given archive folder into this concept and also we couldn't have got that much of the data we just continued with using uh, uh, other small deals so like Rohan will take from now on thank you yeah good just make it clear I mean I, now I understand but it, it, it was not it is not clear what you really mean just make it like with less word you could just say you think this is a good yeah. s strategy but it, uh, it's not working because you don't have enough data for now but you tried it and it's promising just that is sufficient okay. more than explaining in circular mode but I think you know, because that's what is very important. You tried something and it it kind of has is promising, but you couldn't compare because you don't have enough data, and that is understandable. So just you know, to the point when you're to the point, people understand. Otherwise, they probably get confused. But I understand now, and it's good that you mentioned that because that's a good step. That's a good thing. Okay. Let, let okay. me add a little bit. Let me let me add a little bit about. But don't add a little bit because it, we don't have time now. So I'm okay. going to only give you three minutes. So just finish. I mean, the reason is because today we have a very strict timeline, because another team, uh, like the the Nick, this week's project will be joining at twelve. So I have to. Um, yeah, let's just finish this one. Okay. So uh, I think my the screen is visible. 
Okay, yes, it this is. is just this is just about it. I'm gonna go pass over it and then um, continue with the image generation. So we tried using the LLA3 focus and automatic um, 1111. So we tried the same prompt for for the for the three models using the same prompt about to generate an image about hair product. And this is the automatic 1111. And then this is the focus. And this is the LLA3. So we can clearly see the variation. Uh, we came to uh, find that the focus in auto daily history was better in image generation. But over time, we get to realize that if we have the right prompt, daily history is uh, a bit better than focus. So we uh, keep on working on that. So first thing first, what we tried to do was um, the image, uh, the asset generation, which is using GPT and LangChain, we fine-tuned the existing base uh, prompts uh, given the the context we injected into that and um, we ordered that lang chain to call to invoke uh, the functions of generate image and this is some of the image so what we tried to do was to trying to imitate this the first advertisement if you can see there is some background um, and we have uh, Santa Claus and then here do we have a button and here do we have some balloon kind of a thing and another text so literally that's what we um, tried um, to generate so this were some of the inmates um, even if it was uh, taking about 16 17 seconds to generate a single image and it was costly trying it out in different ways um, so so we tr we generated the image in such a way and afterwards we moved to um frame creation so here here comes our fine-tuned uh, yolo model what we have done is like from each asset um this frame creation or positioning of the image also being done using um llm gpt gpt4 and lang chain so what we have what we try to do is like more on prompt engineering so we gave it the asset category and the image path and its width its height and extracting if there is a text ex text extracted from the image and detected objects in the image uh, with their positions uh, starting in the positions and object name when they are detected and dominant uh, colors the uh, three dominant colors so what we have done is given this data of all the assets this is going to be a list of assets combine them in a way give them a position so what we have done is if i can share uh, my code i think that's better other than keeping in here so um oh um, um my window is not letting me to share my entire screen so i'm gonna just proceed with um um, with a medium so what what we have tried to do is like and in, in the more in the long chain what we what we give it is we give it tools which means different functions so we gave it a prompt in a way that it can resize the image in a way that's compatible with the total size so i'm going to give it let's say if i'm wanting um, a frame which is 320 by 480 size so what i'm going to tell him is this is the size that i want and you can the rest rather than the background so i'm going to rather than the background image, uh, you can resize the rest of them and find a good location in a meaningful way into the into the background to make it more aesthetic and a good advertisement frame. And at the end, it was this this was like the product. So the initial generated image of this, uh, let's say, cursor button was bigger and with a background. I also give it another function, which is remove background. So you can also remove backgrounds of image other than the, back, the actual background, and then you can resize them. So I give I give the uh, LangChain this different functions and two tools to manipulate, and also a function to combine them. So if given you if you if you can give this this these things for the for this function it will combine them so for the combination we write a cv2 function which which takes the background and other elements in their positions and then it will place them using cv2 so the lang chain at the end it will call this this function and it will be something like this and like if you can if you can see this is this is the a bit of um the frame and when we come to the storyboard it's going to be a cv2 and combining combining those different elements was part of it. So lessons, what, what we have learned in this project is we get to learn about advertisement and its impact 
um, impact of AI in advertisement and semantic analysis of inmates in different things and the other object detection and fine tuning it with custom data set and um, we try to match that generation with different models and also we get to learn about more of uh, prompt engineering. And then finally, uh, what we have um, challenged was that uh, data set and understanding, semantic understanding of the image was really a tough, tough thing. And um, finally, what our future plan is like to advance semantic analysis, uh, optimizing the YOLO object detection model and position creating another position understanding model in a way it can predict the best positions for the, um, the assets. And um, this is what we have done. Um, Great, okay. I think just let me cut you there. So, I mean, it's excellent. I mean, we have, we have seen three presentations, three different approaches, uh, and that's good really uh, you tried ex you know everyone explored different aspects of it i know some of you have also done but you don't somehow seem to be willing to put your hands at least but there was rudolf um i mean we don't have time now so rudolf if you want to just say in the next two minutes something uh, but i will cut you just because we don't have time um i will cut that around in in four minutes so but you can go on rudolf Okay, thank you, Yababa. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, give me some second to share my screen. Let me know if my screen is visible. Yeah, your voice is slightly in the back, but yeah, we can just you have, yeah, go on, like make it very quick because in three minutes we have to switch. Oh, okay, good. So, uh, I want, I want, uh, for the business case, as we know. Uh, we want to use advanced machine learning, uh, co computer vision. I, I think go to uh, your results. I mean, you, you really don't have time. Okay. That's what I was saying. When I'm saying three minutes, okay. it means three minutes. So use it effectively. Okay, good. So basically what I did, uh, my, my laptop is being slow. What I did is this, um, after generating some images, Use a user uh, stability AI diffusion stable diffusion model. So after generating some model, I use uh, yellow to to train a sample of uh, archive data to learn from that one. Uh, I mean, uh, shall, shall I continue talking uh, because yeah. I'm not aligned with the, what I'm showing? So I use yellow with a sample of, uh, from uh, archive data. So I, in my case, I choose 20, 20 images. And I, 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 try, I try, uh, first of all, I, I, not, I noted them uh, on the website uh, CV80. And I use the four classes. I use uh, uh, the background, uh, the a call to action button, uh, logo, and the uh, Test representation. So uh, after doing this, uh, the model have learned a bit from uh, learner a position and uh, how different classes are look uh, are, are organized on each images. And after this one, uh, I just use three. Uh, first of all, I train my model on th uh, with uh, three. Uh, epoch and it was on my local machine so after that i i use uh, through a uh, four images uh, to to test uh, the model and when i test the model uh, uh let me show the result the result was not good uh so uh, uh, uh this is what i get and there is a I basically it just puts uh, puts 
uh, they image it together. Uh, now really what I want. And I also train another one. I will share, I will show that quickly. Uh, in the code, we have one minute. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go so th those, those are, yeah, those images I'm trying to, I'm trying to train. Uh, I, I didn't use them for the training part, so it didn't. Uh, the yellow, the model I trained didn't know them before. So randomly, he put them like this together. So he doesn't really learn. I mean, do what I wanted for me. Uh, if it, as this one is, uh, this one is the logo. You should place the logo maybe uh, aside of the background. Some, uh, I mean, on the background. So this is what I was expecting to get, but I didn't get that. So basically, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. That we, I have to. We have to stop now, um, and maybe in the afternoon we can arrange another call where many of you who wants to present could present. Um, and so, but let's okay. close it. We will we will take it from here, um, and so okay. we'll arrange it after. Here. Okay, good. Okay, and thanks everyone. And as I said, it's like you know, we we will see uh, what are the competitive ones, and then we will propose as well. And not only just the presentations, but we'll also uh, come to you, ask you if you want to present, uh, if you work, if you submitted a work that we think is useful uh, for the company to see. Okay, so we can stop here. And we can write there, just don't just come back again um, because we will start exactly in one now.